Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. Uh, I'm Dave Taylor. Hi. And our special guest is, am I? I think I am. Uh, our special guest is uh, Jeff Jenkins today. So. Hey everybody. Uh, he is also hashtag not Rick. <laughs> so. This is uh, true. We're pretty excited today, uh, getting Jeff in. Jeff's a uh, spectacular painter, although he won't admit it. Um, not in this company. Not in this company, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, but he's going to be uh, basically teaching us a bit of uh, object source lighting today. Yeah, yeah, on uh, Darth Vader. On Darth Vader, so. Um, but first I'd like to uh, point out your t-shirt. Oh, yes. I'm prepared <laughs> for the day. I'm, I'm good to go. I am the Star Wars number one fan, Fantastic. if you cannot, uh, if you can't tell. Which is just perfect, of course. Uh, we're continuing our painting of Star Wars Legion. Uh, I'll be working on Luke Skywalker, and you'll be working on Darth Vader, as you've already said. Uh, so, as we can see on the box there, super cool glow from the lightsaber there, sort of splashing up onto uh, Darth Vader's uh, armor and cloak and so on. Uh, Jeff's going to be trying to uh, replicate that. Trying. Trying. I trying. trying. I, I gave you an out. <laughs> <laughs> you don't quite make it. That's fine. Okay. So I'll put this away. Let's see what I signed up for. What's the... Oh, what oh yeah, we can, that. Okay, we can do that. We can do that. Okay, yeah. cool. Excellent. Uh, also, just joining us in the studio today is uh, Rick. Is he going to be on camera? Oh, no. Whoa, there hey, he is. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah, I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to be seen on camera today, but uh, there you have it. There you have Me and all my glory. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. You know, the lovely bright orange glory, too. Yes. So uh, Rick is going to be doing the sharing and the communicating in the chat and throwing questions over to us. So uh, that'll be quite good because I'm still not adept at the hosting and painting and scrolling through the chat. No, I was saying that I'm, I'm horrible. I've tried to do live streams and I can't yep. keep the miniature in frame and try to paint and talk and try to read what people are saying. It's, it's too much. It is. It is too much. It's too much for me. For, me. for my little brain. Right. You don't have enough hands, I was going to say. No. Or eyes. Probably both. It's probably yeah. somewhere in between. It's handy to have a second person. Third person. As Four. Five people. So, um, basically, I wanted to make it a little bit harder for Jeff as well not just uh, having to paint the object source lighting. Oh, great. Uh, so I handed him a completely black Darth Vader. Yes. No highlighting. Uh, I'm going to be starting with my uh, Luke Skywalker uh, painted. So, <laughs> so you really kind of gave yourself a hand. Pre pretty much, a, a yeah. Little bit so, oh, yeah. There we go. Over here. There we go. Here he is in his uh, sort of khaki fatigues. He's all done and ready to go. I've just got the, uh, the lightsaber to do and the glow, of course. So we'll be learning about that. As we go away. But uh, hopefully, everybody's been enjoying our Star Wars Legion content over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we have a few more weeks to go. Uh, Tuesday, we put together the ATST uh, and the T47 Airspeeder. Um, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Rick was going out to buy some supplies for the, uh, the painting of those. <laughs> Throw over to Rick. Rick. Well, um, there we go. Actually, I am, I'm, I'm putting in the order. You're putting for in the, the order. Okay. Yeah, I figured I'd put in the order for it through our, our channels that we have, nice. so that uh, I can get it get it at a at a better rate. That's a good idea. You know. Yeah. So. That's cool. So I think um, one of the the colors I didn't mention on Tuesday was uh, the Army Painter Uniform Gray Spray. So we're going to use that over the top of the black for the first. Um, sort of zenithal uh, priming, I guess, uh, layer for the ATST, which should be pretty good. Uh, that thing's okay. big. That model's really large, isn't it? It's insane. It's uh, the the way that the um, the legs can flex. Oh, can they? Go, I haven't seen that. That's cool. Yeah. So we can go um, anywhere. Actually, I'm just going to ask Johnny, can you grab the ATST for me? Yep. Oh, there it is, yeah. So I glued the feet in, and I uh, sort of glued the on but so it's absolutely huge crazy. there um, comparing it to Luke Skywalker but uh, at the moment that's about eight and a half inches tall and it can extend up Holy to be like almost uh, 12 inches tall so absolutely uh, 
insane. Yeah, it's insane. pretty big. Yeah. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, we'll have that. We'll do some painting on that in an upcoming episode. Uh, we've also lined up a few guests to come in and talk uh, terrain and terrain painting with us, which is pretty exciting. We've got, uh, I think we've got Jeff Hall coming in on the 13th of March and uh, Brian Delaney coming in on the 15th of March. So we'll be working on some terrain there. All of which is part of the uh, big Wave 1 collection uh, that we're going to be giving away. Uh, if you head to the Game Trade Media site, uh, sorry, Game Trade Media Facebook page, uh, which you probably are on watching this live feed, uh, the pinned post at the top, and the pinned post at the top of the Painting Happy Little Minis uh, Facebook page will tell you how you can win. Uh, we also, uh, just so you guys know, on the 28th, yep. next, so next Wednesday, uh, Jeff Hall and Paul Butler will be in right. studio and we'll be doing some playtest demos of Star Wars Legion to show uh, all the mechanics of the game as well. And Jeff will probably have some comments about terrain in our paints yep. then, so that'll be a lot of fun. So make cool. sure you tune in for that as well. When, uh, what time? What time on Wednesday? Um, I will post it up. I, I have to check my calendar. I finalize yeah. them. Okay, yeah. cool. That be, uh, will be awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing those, uh, those demo games. Uh, Jeff definitely knows what he's talking about when it comes to demo games. So how are things going over there, Jeff? What are you um, good. working well, on? I just started because I figured like I needed a little bit of a head start <laughs> since you painted your your whole miniature. Yeah, I, I thought that would be it. Um, and what I'm doing right now, I'm just putting down like a, a base coat. It's really, um, uh, really kind of uh, wet. Um, I tend to work with, with paints when they're when they're pretty wet. Right. And um, actually, probably this is a little bit too wet now that I'm looking at it. But um, I'm putting down kind of a peach color, and the thing is that's going to be tricky. Red is a really, really tricky color. Right. Um, it it desaturates really quickly, and if you add um, white to it, it will turn pink very, very quickly. So yep. making something look like it's glowing and, and red is actually super challenging. Right. I, so I think making a glowing pink is easy. Yeah, but a glowing and red itself. Well, is the stuff. irony is that like if, if it's a glowing red, it really kind of is a glowing pink or a glowing right. orange or something yeah. like that. Um, it just doesn't look like that because. So I'm gonna have to hold this guy upside down for a second here, get the underside of him. Um, it just doesn't look like that because you kind of have uh, have it fading to red at the um, uh, at, at the edges, you right. know, where okay. where the the light starts to fall off a little bit. So. <laughs> Really, you guys kind of handed me a, a, a task here because the trick is if you look at even the artwork on the box, yep. the center of the lightsaber blade will be really, really bright, almost white, yep. right? And, it, and if you if you just isolated that color, it would be it would be pink. Yep. Um, but it looks red because it falls off to red on the edges, which is cool, right. except for the fact that you're dealing with a 3D object, and <laughs> if you've got a cylinder. Yep. How do you tell where the edges are? Sure. So what I'm going to end up doing with this guy is I'm, I'm just going to put um, a really bright base coat down that's this real kind of peach color. Um, and I'm using a, a peach color. I'm using um, uh, GW's uh, Kislet Flesh. Cool. And uh, I think the red, I forget which one I'm using here. I think I, it's the Aldebaran Red from Scale 75. Okay. Um, and I'm using the, the scale 75 colors on this for a, a couple of reasons. They're just they're a little flatter, so it helps knock down some of the gloss. I'm going to have like a lot of layers of paint okay. to, to make this bright. Um, and I'm just laying that down as a base coat. And then the only transition that I'm going to really be able to put on this, because I can't tell what angle you're going to end up looking at it from, um, is going to be kind of at the tip. So I know lightsabers right. don't really like fade as they get farther from the hilt, That's but what, yeah. we're gonna have to make we're gonna make right, it okay. look like it fades, so it ends up looking like it's red. We're gonna sort of create a forced uh, exactly sort of, uh, like the rule of cool, right? Right. Yeah, a forced impression. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, and so the other thing too is I'm using this this uh, Kislev flesh color because it's a it, it's essentially a brown. Right. Uh, like a really, really, uh, actually, so a really, really desaturated, like, orange color with a little bit of, like, pink in it as well. Right. Um, which is, uh, it'll keep it from getting too, too pink. Right. Um, and it, when you're doing an OSL effect, you want the actual source of light to literally be the brightest thing right. on the miniature. Because if, uh, I think a lot of people 
kind of run into that as a problem where right. they'll have a miniature that's very bright and then do an OSL effect and it will look kind of weird because the OSL either isn't the brightest thing yep. or it blends in and so you don't get that real stark lighting effect. I've so made that mistake several times. I, I do it a lot. The past. Yeah. But uh, I think we've got a question. Yeah, we've got a couple questions. Uh, <clears throat> first question is, uh, actually has to do with the ATST and it's coming from Alex. Alex wonders, are you going to paint uh, the ATST so that the joints will still work without ruining the paint? So right. that someone could adjust its height? That's a good question. Uh, I think we'll I think we'll try and do that because again it's 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 a cool model. So having that uh, that ability to have that toy factor, I guess, in it would be cool as well. Okay, and then uh, also uh, why why do you uh, prefer using a wet palette there, Jeff? Um, for me, it's uh, it helps me not rush, um, and because it, it keeps the paints workable uh, a little bit longer. Um, I've gone back and forth. I've done both wet palettes and, and dry palettes. Um, I tend to kind of worry when I paint and like, am I, you know, like, am I, am I doing this fast enough? Or if you're doing a technique like wet blending um, or something like that, keeping the paints workable longer just kind of helps me calm down um, and, uh, and and kind of relax and, cool. and, and not really worry about it. Um, but you can do, I've seen incredible painters with just about every kind of tool. I've seen people using pieces of cardboard. I've seen people using pieces of plastic, yep. paper, I, everything. We've talked about uh, wet palettes and using wet palettes before. Um, it's one where I've, I've tried to use them on occasion. But I have the sort of opposite, thing, opposite thing. I'm not super interest in, interested in slowing down my painting. <laughs> I would it's get a good sped point. up a little bit. Well, you're painting really big projects too, so a lot of the time. Usually I am, um, but yeah. So painting quicker is an important thing for me. So it's it, it's interesting to hear that it's to help you slow down and pace yeah. uh, pace yourself. Really, it helps me pace which myself. Is cool. I think it also helps too that um, I tend to work really loose with the paint. I tend to to work pretty wet, um, and as I've as I've kind of developed painting, I've gotten sloppier and, and sloppier in how right. I apply the paint, which is, it's helpful to be thinner when you do that, because you don't build up as much paint and you don't risk having actual physical texture on the model. Um, right. And it makes it really easy to be fast and, and quick and, and paint kind of messy, but then, you know, come back later and smooth it out and you don't have, you know, lumpy paint or something like okay. that. Okay, cool. That's neat. You know, everything, uh, saving the, making it tighter later on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In, like getting your details in place. If so you've on. got if you've got a um, a uh, a gaming model, for example, um, the you know you can do it really fast and really uh, kind of, for lack of a better word, sloppy, um, kind of organic. You can do it yep. really quickly, and then um, go back and smooth it out later. Like you don't wanna, yep. like uh, people think you either start like a display model or start like a, a gaming model, or and let, that's your end goal, and that's right. where you start. I don't kind of, I, I kind of tend not to think of it that way. I kind of, you start out with a, you know, tabletop model, and if you end up turning it into a, you know, display model later, that's cool too. Right. Um, I think that's something you totally can do. Cool. I, just, I, I was just it's curious to see if that, uh, that helped. No, they, they, all, they all are, yep. same, same thing, you and everything, everybody's cool. happy. Excellent. All things are good here. Everything's, <laughs> everything's fine. Everything's, everything's fine. fine. <laughs> Yeah, the chat room's lit. We got, and I'm using lit because my kids use it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, our Kurt's in there. I, oh, hey, Kurt. I was going to say the lights are on. The so, lights are so on. What do you mean by lit? Um, okay. But uh, those of you that are in the chat, chat, uh, thank you very much, Kurt. Hi, hope you're doing well. And also to everybody else out there, please share this to all the uh, uh, groups and on your personal Facebook page because I'm sure that there are others that are going to enjoy watching these two uh, and uh, learn some source lighting. So when uh, I've just got started on my lightsaber, just jumped in with the uh, ooh, I think it's sky blue from uh, uh, Vallejo mm -hmm. uh, and some white. So I, when we talked about sort of the, that color changing yep. along the thing, so the blue should be at the tip. Um, I'm the actually was the I'm actually doing the it other. the other way around. Okay. Um, because in my in my mind, I'm thinking that the um, the hilt. Yep. Is actually going to be the brightest 
point, so where the where the, the blade is actually coming out of the hill and extending. So I think it's going to get darker okay, as yep. it goes down. Cool. Um, so at the at the tip, I'm painting a little bit more red, and then a little bit more of the beige, and mixing in some white um, at the uh, at the source. Okay. Of the uh, I don't know what the kyber crystal or wherever it is. <laughs> you know exactly um, what it is, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I do know exactly <laughs> what it is. Uh, <laughs> You're the number one. St number I'm the number one Star, Star Wars fan. Star Wars fan. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Um, and again, this isn't really the way it would it would look, yeah. because otherwise, you could do something where you you painted a really bright, um, a bright piece right down the center of yep. the blade, and then made it red on the edges. But the problem is, you're only going to be able to see that from one, from one angle, and yep. if you turn the model, it's it's going to break it. And we know that these models are going to be uh, used on the the gaming table. Yeah, if these are going to be gaming models, that's a no go. Yeah. Um, but that's the other thing about OSL that I always kind of struggled with when, when I first started trying to do this stuff was um, the fact that you kind of have to be okay with the fact that it's really only going to look awesome in a photo. Right. Like, <laughs> you, like I mean, you can do, even, um, I took a class a, a long time ago from, um, it wasn't that long, but um, was it Victoria Lamb? Victoria Lamb. That okay, did, yeah. I mean, she was like one of the originators that brought this kind of technique to miniature painting, I think. Like, yeah, hers were the first models that I saw. Certainly, certainly one of the most famous uh, in the miniature painting. She did community. the, um, oh, what was the, the piece with the person who was tied up and they were, they the had the rescue, torches. The rescue of Assistant Joe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and the one thing that stuck out about those pieces when I saw them in person was how dark they were. Like, right. they look great photoed against a black background and you could see the OSL effect. But you have to be okay with the fact that that's not going to translate completely to you know the in, tabletop in real life. Yep, yeah. I actually took the same class. Oh yeah, um, it might not have been at the same time, but I've taken that class with uh, with Victoria as well. It was awesome. At, She's um, Adepticon. I was at Adepticon. Yeah. Were we in the same class? Possibly. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe that was might have been before we met. It could have been. It could have been. But I was. Um, I mentioned uh, Adepticon and the hobby classes on Tuesday. And I went and checked out. They actually have this year 137 different hobby classes. That's crazy. From um, I think 40, 30 or 40 different uh, instructors, um, which is absolutely, yeah, it is absolutely insane. That's awesome. So uh, Damon Drescher, who's a, a friend of ours, um, is the hobby czar. So he coordinates all of that uh, with the help of a team, and. He asked me to mention there are two new classes that have just been added uh, for Adepticon. So if anybody's heading out to Adepticon, uh, you can uh, sign up for a class on sculpting busts. Who's doing with, that? With uh, Hugo from uh, Big Child Creatives. Really? Yep. So Big Child Creatives are uh, a Spanish company that are behind a lot of the sculpts for Cool Me or Not. So all the the Simon yeah. games. So. Your stuff's awesome. A lot of the uh, stuff that's coming up for Song of Ice and Fire, um, a lot of Roman Bones, uh, I think uh, quite a lot of the Rising Sun uh, stuff, and a lot of Dark Age miniatures as well. Are done by those. So uh, Hugo's the sculpting manager at Big Child, so he's going to be uh, teaching a sculpting class, which is pretty cool. That's really cool. And uh, I can't sculpt at all, so <laughs> it's like lost on me. But uh, yeah, so it's definitely, uh, definitely cool. Two, two new classes. Uh, so if you head to adepticon.org and look at the event listing, uh, you'll see all the hobby classes that are still available. Uh, a lot of them are sold out, but uh, if you're going, it's definitely worthwhile checking those out, uh, which will be pretty cool. You, are you running classes this year? I am. I am. I'm doing a, a couple. I'm doing one on um, like micro detailing and like how to do scratches right. and battle damage and stuff, and another on like. Um, just painting Space Marines, like how to think about the shapes and right. volumes painting Space Marines. Okay, cool. Excellent. Yeah. Um, if, if folks want to see a um, spectacular piece by Jeff uh, that he's still uh, working on, um, yeah. but he's been posting it on his Facebook page, if you look for uh, Rogue Shader. That's me. Yep. Yeah. So, how do you spell that? It's R O G U E. S H A D E R. A D E R. Yeah. Rogue Shader. Yeah. Uh, I should know how to spell it probably. <laughs> But uh, yeah, definitely go and check that out. It's a work in progress on uh, the um, Sons of Horus Abaddon. Yeah, Abby, sure. yep. as I like to call him. All right, we have another question for you guys. Yep. Uh, the question is, what is the model holder that you're using on your Vader? 
Oh, thank you. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> um, like I said, I suck at keeping them in, the, in frame. I'm just trying to keep it from blocking your face. Um, yeah. I actually don't remember. I'm really sorry. I actually don't remember where I got them. I got I got them a long time ago. There's a couple of different. I know. I know. There's a couple of different variants. Um, this one is a. Um, uh, this is just a piece of ceramic, and it's got like a little. You can see it. Well, maybe I took it out. I guess not. It has a piece of cork that's normally in there. Um, I usually use like blue tack or poster tack or something to hold the models down, though, and that doesn't necessarily hold on to the cork. So I just grabbed the. It's just a regular old GW base, and just you know took the uh, blue tack and stuck it to the side so that it would uh, uh, adhere. Um, but it is kind of handy to have that backing piece so that you can kind of hold the model like this without getting uh, um, getting your hands on it and you can spin it around. I want to say, um, I actually don't remember where it's from. Um, it was overseas. I feel okay. maybe Poland? Mm. I, I, really do, I really don't remember. But um, I will take a look and see if I can find it and then maybe post up in the comments section of the video later. Perfect. Yep. That would be cool. It's one of those Every things, we, we, we talk occasionally about different painting tools, and uh, one of the best painting tools that we've got in here is Rick. Um, but, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, thought, I was, expecting I was like, wait, is that there. going where I think it's going? A big laugh from Rick. Yeah. But, uh, no, um, the, the, uh, the GW miniature holder. I haven't um, gotten one of those yet, but they look really cool. Yep. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, so the, the Citadel. Does it spring closed? Or? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need to grab some of those. So, I could be using it, but... Perfect. Yeah? Does it look perfect now? <laughs> now I'm the biggest painting perfect. tool in here? You are. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so Rick's a big fan of that. And I like it. That's cool. But, uh, yeah, definitely cool. Oh yeah, definitely. And then even if I didn't have something that would like click into the base, I could still use the same blue tack thing. Yeah. Poster tack. That's cool. I could have yeah. asked you the little skull on top. Yeah, that came with it. It came with it. Yeah. Nice. It's so like because this pulls off and like you can pull this thing off. Oh, right. Wrath core. Hmm. Wrath. Is it wrath core? It might. Uh, no, that was. I think those were wood. Okay. I saw those. I almost bought a bunch of them, and I missed out on the Kickstarter. Um, but they make ones just like this that are wood. Um, I'm actually sad I didn't get any of this. But, um, yeah, so all I did here was I took some pure white and right. put it right at the base of the saber. So it okay. looks kind of yeah. like you get that. Like if you look at old, um, is it Ralph McQuarrie or like the old like concept sketches for right. the lightsabers, they always had like a like an energy bloom at the base, and right, then it kind of okay. tapered off to a point at the at the top. And I know that never made it to the movies, but we're that's what we're doing here. Cool. Okay. So we'll put that in there. And now I'm actually starting to to build up, just with some thin glazes, um, just the same kind of thing you would think of highlighting, um, highlighting a volume. But I'm starting to build that up on the areas where the light would cast. Okay. From the from the lightsaber, on, so onto the miniature. so like onto onto his cloak down here, um, you're probably going to get some at the top of, of his knee pad here. Right. So if I'm, I might be going about it sort of the wrong way here, but uh, if I'm going to start doing that same thing on his uh, fatigues along the top here, mm -hmm. so I highlighted these with Rakarth flesh. Yep. Should I be mixing the blue into some Rakarth? Um, yeah, you, you definitely could do that. You could do it a couple of ways. You could either start to mix color in to your yep. base color, or you could glaze that color on sort of directly on top of an already highlighted surface. Okay, so just glaze the blue. You could you could do it. You could do okay. it one of both ways. Now in this case, since Vader's like all black and starting out that way, the way I would kind of attack this is I want basically this side to look like it's highlighted from light coming from this point. Right. So I want to. I'm just going to do red right on top of the black and not yep. really worry about it until sure. I find that it's not bright enough, and then I might like highlight a little bit Add more. A little more in. Right. Um, and uh, and then like do any highlights coming from this end. So you like highlight. If you think of it, I'm going to try to point it at the camera. Highlight from this direction normally, like yep. you would black. So you can use grays or turquoises or blues or whatever, and then kind of highlight from like this direction <laughs> right, okay. with red. So you can see here I've started to glaze up some reds underneath the the, um, the cloak. I don't know if that's showing yep. up on camera or not. Um, and then I'm going to do that around the hand and up the arm and down on the edges of this armor and that kind right. of thing too. Okay, cool. 
So you can mix the colors in. Um, I'm just glazing, what is it, blood red? This is scale 75. No, this might be Antares red. Okay. Um, I'm just glazing it on top, but you definitely could yep. mix it. Um, okay, and I'm going to try that then. You might be a, it might be a little faster if you mix yeah. it. That sounds <laughs> and, perfect then. And what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, so you may oh. actually be the winner with that technique. There's no winners. Well, there's no losers, I guess. We can all be winners. So there's no cheating in, in painting. Somebody asked me the other day if I thought like using an airbrush was for anything was cheating. Right. I was like, how do you cheat at miniature painting? Like, yeah. is that possible? <laughs> can, you, can you cheat at art? Like, I guess you can. No. I don't think you can. I guess maybe if you steal something, you can cheat, but... And again, for those of you who don't, like I say, I'm glazing these colors in. If you if you don't know where the glaze is, it's just really thinned, uh, really thinned paint. And so I'm just taking um, a little bit of the slightly darker red here, just thinning it down, and then um, actually pulling a lot of it out of the brush, and then moving it from the direction of shadow into the direction of light, so that if any paint pools, it pools where I want the most. Cool. Intensity. So it's like it's as you were saying, sort of that the, th the very thin layer of the color, the glaze, sort of gave me a feeling of um, like having some. Uh, it's like a clear or it's like a um, transparency mm -hmm. sort of film, or a, um, I can't. What's the type of wrapping paper? Cellophane. Cellophane. That's the word I was looking for. Thanks very much. Uh, so like a cellophane, like a red cellophane that you're laying. Over the, the highlights, exactly. Essentially. So I'll do it on this on this cardboard or this piece of paper. You can see how thin that is. Yeah. And then if I go back, if I let that dry for a second, and then I do it again, and then let that dry for a second, and then do it again. Oh, is that coming up on camera? Yep. Yeah. Um, building the intensity there. You're just building up an intensity of pigment at the point that you have the strongest, and that's how you can get a smooth blend without any right. kind of craziness. And then you can come back and with a little bit thicker paint. Awesome. You know, kind of strengthen it up. Okay. We do have we a, another question over here. We've got a question from a, a gentleman by the name of Alex. Uh, normally, would you want to do source lighting last when painting a model? Yes. Yeah, there we have it. Usually. Um, Let we have an hour, oh. and so <laughs> I, went, I really wanted to get like this piece done, even <coughs> if the rest of the model doesn't get done. Um, you generally would want to lay all of your highlights, um, lay all of your shadows, and then do your source lighting because you'll want any of the colors or highlights or intensity of the paint underneath to show through that OSL for the effect. Um, but just in case we don't actually get around to painting the other side of the model. Um, well, on the show. On the show. On the show, yeah. yeah. I wanted to, uh, to get to the reds first. That'll be homework. Yeah. Probably for me. Mm -hmm. I know. Man. I know. Imagine that. People can win a joint model. Ooh, I painted like by it. I like it. You and me. I like it. I would be incredibly honored for such a position. Getting to co paint a model with Dave Taylor would be pretty <laughs> freaking awesome. It's kind of cool. You, it's pretty cool just sitting here, I'll be honest you with you. Lie. No, you no, lie. No, no, no. Dude, this is actually, I think this is the first time, you know, we've known each other for, for a while. This is the first time I think we've actually painted together I think like, you're right. it is. in the same spot. Yep. It is. I like it. We've talked about each other's work before. Oh, yeah. Well, and about each other normally. Well, to other people. For sure. Yeah, in various <laughs> degrading, various degrees of harshness. No, it's definitely cool. I, um, but yeah, I always go and rush ahead, so that's what I've done here. And I kind of like plot it along. Looks, it looks a little bit pale, so I might need to, uh, to actually try some glazing. Yeah. You could take, um, you could maybe use like an ink too, if you have one to yeah. like pop a color. Don't. Uh, oh. Let's see if that works fine. So the scale color paints, we haven't, um, we haven't dealt with those before, are they? Uh, we, we, 
what do you what do you think about them? Yeah, they're cool. I mean, I use I use everything. So you can see, like, I've got laid out here: GW paints, Vallejo model color, scale color. I use Andrea sometimes. I, it's okay. like everything has different um, has a qualities, you know, like a different right. kind of, of purpose. Like that stuff, like their inks, the scale center five inks are yep. super intense. So you will want to like really thin it down. Really, basically, okay. take a bunch of water and like a tiny little wow. pip of yeah. Like it's I see it here. it's legit. No, um, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. But they're also kind of glossy yeah. too, so you know, be be warned. Be warned. Okay, um, I think we can always we can always come back afterwards with a with a um, a varnish. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that's what we'll. Yeah, I mean, I end up doing. I like a lot of different paints for a lot of things. Usually, the scale seventy five paints are really really matte, um, which I like, especially on reds and stuff that you're building up a lot of layers. Right. Um, so I kind of like that effect. Um, but at the same time, it can kind of be detrimental, too. So, like, they're, they've got a flat black that I use sometimes that is, I mean, it is flat black. It's so flat right. that it looks like gray. Okay. So I'll actually use a little bit gl glossier black sometimes when I actually want it to look super black. So right. I just use everything, like experiment, like play with them. That's part of the, part of the fun It's figuring out what works for you, I think. Yeah, that's cool. It's like if you're laughing, that might be Kurt. No, it's not Kurt, sadly. It's not talking trash. No, not today. All right, so uh, one of the questions isn't actually for you guys. It's for the uh, studio. What kind of camera are they using to film above? It is a webcam. It is a Logistic. Logitech. Logitech. Like 920 and a 930. A 920 and a 930. So there you go to uh, Maxime Croteo. Croteo. That's a cool name. It sounds like a gladiator name. Yes. You sound like a gladiator. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Are you not entertained? It's awesome. Cool. I'd love to have like a really distinct cool name like that. Just like Jeff. There's yeah. a lot of Jeffs. Dave Taylor. Could be. You're right. It could be worse. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there's only. Uh, I think there's only one. One or two names that are. More common than that, and it's like John Smith. <laughs> there was one time I had to go to my bank to pick up a, uh, a new bank card, and then I said, oh, "I'm Dave Taylor. I'm going to pick up my, my bank card." And they were like, "Okay, well, let me just uh, let's just find you in the system." Is this your address? <laughs> Is this your address? <laughs> they went through 23 screens. Of Dave Taylor's with like 20 Dave Taylor's on each screen <laughs> before they reached me. <laughs> it's a common name, particularly in Australia. But there we go. You have a question as well? Nice. Oh my goodness. How awesome is that looking? Uh, all right, so I have a question for you guys, and this is from me, not the chat. When you get when you have a miniature and you want to do object source lighting and you have like a lamp, a lantern or a lightsaber or whatever, have you ever taken like a small LED LED light that simulates the same color and put it in the general area of where that source would come from, take a picture of how it illuminates on the miniature to give you a better idea as to where you want to put your paint scheme at? I have not used an LED. That is an awesome idea. I've used like flashlights and stuff like that to get more of a, like a general, but the, like a general feel. But they've been um, not uh, like accurate enough, I guess. But like an LED potentially could. That's actually a really good idea. Um, I'm perpetually lazy, and that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> so I just make stuff up as I go along. You'd have to do the wiring. Yeah. It's like mm. even even like a simple kit from somewhere like uh, Powered Play. It would be pretty easy to plug it all together. Yeah. I still, I have never thought about doing that. It's a, it's a good idea. But I'm I think also it is the, a good idea. I'm also the same guy who, uh, for most of the object source lighting things that I've done, that I mess around with, it's been like a, a blue light. And the model that I'm doing on it is white. So it's casting blue onto white. So the model itself is the brightest part. So yeah. it's really, it goes back to that, that part where you said, 
the source of light, you want that to be the brightest part on the pole. Yeah. And I've just gone and completely screwed it up by well, taking it the other way around. It's not like the model is the brightest part on the model, and the, the light is, eh, it comes just like second or third. And that's the <laughs> thing that really is tough to get your, like, to get your head around, is that making sure that it's actually the brightest thing yep. on, the, on the model. It's really easy, especially if you're doing something that's shiny or you know, that you're trying to use, like, build a lot of contrast into. Right. Um, it's really tough to do that. And, uh, like, this is, like, it's harder because it's red, but it's also easier because he's, ar his armor or his yep. get-up or whatever is black. Right. Um, so it actually makes it a little bit easier. Um, and, uh, yeah, so what I'm doing now is I'm going in and strengthening some of these highlights. But um, so I just put like this splotch of much brighter reddish orangish color here on his cloak thing. Yep. And I just kind of slapped it on there, but it looks kind of jarring and out of place. So I'm going to go back in with those glazes and just smooth it out. And this is kind of what I was talking about, where you don't have to like do everything super neat at first. All I'm doing is just kind of glazing the transitions in between these colors. And if I do this a few times, it'll eventually that line will disappear. Okay. Cool. Nice. Um, I just went and created a whole bunch of lines. Well, that can work too. <laughs> that can also. That's like another kind of blending. Like I've seen people like crosshatch blend or like right, dot yeah. blend, and um, I think it was uh, um, I forget who it was, but they 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 did a, an example where they were talking about blends. That's not going to work. And they did. Um, I use this black. And they were like, you know, if you've got a solid color and then do like like dots. Okay. And the dots are closer together, close to the solid color and farther out. Yep. You know, as you get farther from it. Like that's a type of blend too. Like that still right. is a transition between black and white. It's yep. not super smooth, but that's okay. That's One thing that he's tried with uh, object source lighting is to use a real thin white paint through my fine airbrush and spray from the light source onto the model, knowing that at those white spots is where you would put the color that you that need. That can totally work, especially yeah. if it's larger. Yeah. And I think if you're, you're able to get up, up close to a model, up close to that point yeah. of where it would be, that can, uh, that can be good. Sometimes, though, um, and I think it goes back to the when you were describing before that when we're painting, sometimes we can't paint what we'd actually see. Yeah. Um, you might find that on a surface like, sort of a flat surface like this, for example, the, um, let's say we had a light sh sort of shining out from the, the hole here, or there was a, like a light cover or something like that. The, the um, I guess the, sort of, uh, the thing you might, trying to do first is, is use that airbrush to spray around it or to spray sort of from that point. But what you're actually getting is if the light source was sitting out sort of off, off the side of it, like out this, this far, which is where your airbrush is going to be, rather than how it would look coming out from the light sort of in the center there. Hopefully that made sense. Yeah. I know that not all the words I wanted to use were in there, <laughs> but some of them fell out of my head at the wrong time. I think most of the right words fell out of the mouth. Though. Okay, I think that's they good. Were good. Just in a word salad format. <laughs> <laughs> Go back and rearrange it. But uh, you, yeah. I think on bigger stuff you can make that work. You yeah, know, like you the can larger make that work the work. the thing. Yeah, for sure. The the, t the real trick though is like the larger the model, the harder it is to do. You know, like you can't have. It. I can paint the this guy is, is all black right yep. right now, so it's really easy to like make colors pop on yep. him. It's hard to like you just be putting like a black tank. On, uh, on the on the battlefield or whatever, if you're if you're playing with right. it, so yeah. it's a little hard to make that OSL jump without making the areas around it look brighter, and then it doesn't stand out as much. So you're in like this this catch twenty two. Yeah, so you gotta work back and forth on it for sure. But um, but it, it it's it's still sort of you try to cre create that look, the look of a glowing light source. Yeah. Without like basically by breaking physics a little bit. Yep. Yeah, I mean that's all we're doing is like. Yep. Breaking physics. Breaking, nice. breaking, yeah. the law, breaking the law. Take that, Bill Nye. <laughs> <laughs> Save the world. Cool. Yeah, I think.
like that. It's all, and, and the other thing you can do too, I, did, I actually did this before I came. Um, look up artwork, like online. Like Google is your friend if you're trying to figure out how to do stuff like from a painting wise. And even if you can't find someone who's painting the thing that you're painting, right? Like if I were to look up right now, like, you know, it's Star Wars Legion, Darth Vader, miniature OSL technique, there's probably not a ton of examples on there. Yep. There might be some, but maybe not a ton that do what I want. Um, so I just looked up Darth Vader artwork and like right. what, you know, what are some like 2D paintings and that kind of thing. From a 2D painting, you can see where they're painting the highlights. You can see, you yeah. know, what's going on and then you just have to, then your job is just to kind of like translate that to three dimensions. Right. That's true. When you, when you mention paintings, I immediately thought of like um, sort of the old masters like Rembrandt. Well, you can do that and, too. Uh, who for, for lighting, like Rembrandt would be a fantastic one to study. Yeah, Rembrandt would be fantastic. Rembrandt painted Darth Vader? He did. <laughs> he did. Little known fact. He's hiding in the back of um, the the Night Watch. Is that the name? That's the name of the famous painting. Is the it? large, the big one. I think it's called the Night Watch. Yeah, he's hiding in the back. Oh. He's in the shadows. I, I had no idea. Slight red glint Slight. coming up from well, the side. Like, even look at... Um, I went and looked at like toy boxes. Like, okay. if you remember, yeah. like some of the old toy—not uh, old, but like I guess the last generation. I don't know whether it's the current one or not. Of like Star Wars toys, they would have that really blue saturated black, and then like there would be a glow on one side right. of okay. Vader's helmet from that. I don't remember whether the lightsaber was on it or not, but it was like implied that the right. lightsaber was there. So you can use that too. Excellent. One other question I'm going to ask is. Um, your thumb. My thumb. Your thumb. Your painting my, thumb. My own little Rembrandt. Yeah. I'm glad you brought your painting thumb. I, I just saw <laughs> mine. Um, yeah, so this is the thing. You, you see a lot of people doing it. Um, I can tell you why I do it. Sure. I don't know okay. if, if everybody if everybody's the same. I'm not worried about other people. Um, I, I do it for, <laughs> like... Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, so, Woohoo! <laughs> Look at that. Oh, yeah. Check it. Um, that can't be great for my skin. Um, it probably, it's not toxic, it's just right? Fine, yeah. yeah, what I'm licking my brush. It's not like I'm <laughs> yeah. you know, super concerned here. Um, I do it for, for two reasons. One, you know, whenever you get paint on your brush, you always, um, you like unload all the, you don't like right. always keep all the paint in the brush you put in there. Sure. So like you kind of brush some of it out. The other reason, um, and the more important reason, the reason I use my thumb instead of a paper towel or, you know, a palette or something like that to do it, um, is I can actually feel the consistency of the paint. Okay. So if I'm trying to do a check to see, okay, am I am I working like thin enough to have it be a glaze? Is it going to be like a base coat or that kind of thing? I can feel as the paint goes on to my thumb, right. how wet or not it is, and okay. it's just kind of like a practiced kind of thing. Like the the more I do it, the more I can feel it. Right. Um, but if I were to take like solid white, you know, like right off the palette and paint that on, like I can feel that that's a little bit too thick for what I want to do. So right. I can put some more water in it and draw it out and that kind of thing. Cool. And you just look silly, which is fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> That's great. I like it. Yeah, I think I've, I've always, um, no, maybe not always. I don't know, thinking back to some of my earlier painting. Probably when I was painting in uh, like in a store or something like that, I might have used my, my thumb yeah. or my uh, thumbnail, that kind of thing. But uh, generally nowadays I always use a Use a palette. Yeah, and, and that's the, the palette's another interesting piece, right? Like people, um, this is like the biggest trick that I learned. Um, I think when you start painting, you get really focused on the consistency of your paint, and people yep. are asking, you know, how much water do I put in, or, you know, and, um, uh, you know, thin, too thin, even coats, right? Yeah, too thin coats. Uh, yep. Too thin coats. <laughs> um, but, uh, it, different consistencies of paint you use for different things right. and for, for different techniques and that kind of stuff. So um, uh, what I didn't realize a lot of painters were doing is when they dip their brush in water, they've got, you know, you, if you can kind of see, I don't know, nope. there's like yeah, a, a, there's a decent amount of, of water actually in the brush. Nope. Yeah, maybe go down a little farther, yeah. you can see better. Um, so there's like a decent amount of water in there. Like if I put it on my finger, you can see the amount of water that's coming off. Yep. A lot of painters will like sort of set an amount of water in their brush and then take their palette and then put a little bit of paint on it and do this kind of swishy thing. They're actually mixing water and thinning their paint down right. like as they're loading their brush up. 
And okay. so people think, you know, you're putting water in it and setting like a preset mixture of paint. Sometimes people aren't. And so you wonder why they're not thinning their paints and they kind of are. Right, okay. Um, but they're doing it like on a like per brush load. Right. Just at a, at a different time. I guess, yeah. yeah. Okay. Kind of a different schedule of when things happen. What? Uh, That's pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Here. Running short on time. So. I can do it. Well, I can, I can do thing. the OSL. Yeah. I don't know about that. Okay. But we'll see what we can do. <laughs> so I'm just going to, we got like, I think, what, 15 minutes? Something like, Something like that. Something like that? Yeah. So, all right. So I'm going to just blast on okay. some highlights here. And then here I'm just hitting the under edge. Okay. So I'm just going to get you to look up for a second and check out on the one OSL. Oh, yeah. Does that look all right? Yeah, that looks awesome. Yeah, exactly. I think that looks cool. Right. Okay. I think that looks really cool. What I would do, I'd make sure, and I, I think you did. Oops. Um, I would grab any like hard edges right. that are facing down and make sure to give them a pop. So like here, like I think the bottom of this. Oh, you mean like, uh, Um, I can say it's a little bit tougher on mine because his, uh, he doesn't his really the same is any. up so high. Yeah, he doesn't really have any. Yeah. So I'm just hitting, like. Okay, yep. It's actually going to be a little too bright. So I did something a little too bright. That was stupid. So I just get more glaze and just tone it back down. That's like a lot of my painting, by the way, is me making mistakes and just glazing, glazing over them over and over and over again. Okay. But there are no cool. mistakes, just happy little happy. accidents. <laughs> happy little accidents. Happy little accidents. <laughs> exactly. So I think that's got most of the, the light effect. Yep. It's pretty good. Oh, yeah. If you might on camera, it's tough to tell where you're you know, you awesome. see it. Yeah, it looks like it's glowing. That's cool. Um, so, so we've got that, and then um, I'm just going to take real quick while we've got time, and then I'm just going to work around the other side and yep. do some, some general highlights and that kind of thing. And I'm just using a turquoise. I think this is um, P3 Coal Black. Oh, Coal Black. Coal Black. One of my favorites. Which I still say is like the same color as Dark Sea Blue from the Lighthouse. But yeah. Oh, I have not tried Dark Sea Blue. And then I'm flipping it. This must be Light Sea Blue. Light Sea Blue. That is way Light Sea Blue. <laughs> yeah. Not quite as dark. But yeah. And this is just like normal highlighting now. So this is basically what would be the shadows from the There's a I'm the thinking lightsaber, I'm thinking there's a light source. Yeah. From I'm thinking there's a light front. source here yeah. and the only light source over here is the lightsaber. Right. Okay. Because that's the only way to make it kind of pop. Because he's of course he's going to be standing on the dark side. Yeah, he's going to be in the shadows. Looking he's Vader. The, the light. He's Vader. It could be mine. Come to me. Yeah, he's doing his like death grip thing, <laughs> right? <Huh? laughs> We've got cookies. <laughs> I mean, there's a, a distinct lack of cookies. Oh, yeah. How long have you been on the dark side? Hmm? How long have you been on the dark side? It's about three months now, <laughs> three and a half months. Since I joined uh, Benny Happy Little Minis. Yeah. And uh, oh yeah, speaking of that, so it's next next Thursday is episode 100. No way! Yeah. yeah. So we're congratulations. That's awesome. And uh, I don't think we haven't finalized anything, but we're hoping to be able to bring some folks into the show via Skype. Yeah. Um, so we reached out to a couple of people to get like Terry with the, the Torco. Terry and the Torco, yeah. And uh, a couple others come in. Like, I'd like to get uh, Josh from Mini Paint Studio. Yeah, that'd be cool. Have you um, spoken with Kurt? Uh, we'll bring Kurt back for the next five minutes. Oh, no, not be able to come down, but maybe we can figure just Skype in. Him a yeah. camera. If you just got two days, I, I helped them get a, get set up so that they have uh, all the camera gear up there so they can start making videos about their games. All right, cool. So they, uh, maybe they can figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> it's Kurt, so. But yeah, so that'll be uh, pretty exciting. I think we're going to be, uh, oh, 
we, who we were ta- what were we gonna be painting? Um, next Thursday, yeah. um, probably painting those things, right? The the big guys, the, the ships. Oh, the uh, oh the ATSD and the mm-hmm. the speeder. Okay, yeah, that should be ooh, crazy. Extra pressure. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna do that in an hour? Sure. <laughs> Why do I think that's multi-episode then? Because <laughs> I won't be using any glazes. <laughs> two thin coats? Why two thin coats when I can use one thick one coat? One thick coat. Stay nice and warm. Oh, Duncan would be rolling. Yeah. There we go. Some of that on the spinner. Yeah, you tell me when you need when he brushes down. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep another few minutes poking out some highlights here until it is. The rest of Luke was really easy to paint. Um, I painted uh, at home before you came. At home before I came, yeah. yeah. Just to sure rub it in. Yeah. Hey, no, I'm just saying. You don't talk about how <laughs> slow I am. I'm not gonna talk about how you painted your miniature at home. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't say you were slow. I no, I think you did actually. I did. I am <laughs> slow. Should I move into the center there, John? I am slow. We're having some. Uh, Focus issues. I'm but, disagreeing um, with you. No, no, okay. <laughs> nice. Uh, but uh, yes, I'm uh, base coated in, in uh, Zandri dust from uh, oh, Games okay. Workshop. Uh, the uh, basically his boots, legs, no, sorry, lower legs, um, and the um, pouches and so on were all painted in uh, beige brown. And then uh, gave the whole thing a wash with uh, Strong Tone from Army Painter. And then highlighted back up with his Andrew Dust and some Rakar Flesh. Ooh. Um, which is a really nice desaturated brown. Lots of gray in it. Looks that khaki sort of, uh, sort of look. And painted the hands, face, and hand. And oh, destroyed it with the. Uh, James no, dude. I oh, James is in the chat. He finally took a picture of Joyner. Hooray! I think that OSL looks that lunch, good. James. Hmm? I think that OSL looks good. Cool. I think it's great. It works. I think it's uh, it's kind of funny. There's there's part of it, and I, I'm not sure if I should say this, because it might put the image in people's minds and they won't be able to unsee it. <laughs> but uh, so the colors there, the that blue and the the sandy kind of color. Um, as it turns around and goes past, it kind of feels like a sort of like a um, like a chrome reflection on a painting from the eighties. It does. The color palette is yeah. yeah it's like right there. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, it's like the um, like a oh, what do we non-metallic call? metal. What's that called? Chrome yeah. Kind of look. There's like a it's like an artificial horizon line. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Sky Earth. Sem, sem, sky, sky Earth non-metallic sky metal. Earth yeah. Non-metallic metal. Yeah. Yeah. Because we. We just love to create these ridiculous. Nerds. Yeah. Nerds. Because we, we love these ridiculous, like, acronyms. Like, oh, oh this yeah. is true non metallic metal, non non metal, non true non metallic metal. Yes. yes. This, is why, this is why I stick with just painting metallics. Nerds. Carl said Sky Earth, too. Sky Earth, yeah. Yeah. It's that, uh, yeah, because you, you paint the blue sky and then the horizon, the brownish ground. And yep. Make it wobbly or whatever. Uh, James Waffle, Waffle, James Waffle uh, will be running some classes at Adepticon. Uh, he does some fantastic work with uh, Sky Earth he does. metallic metals. I love James's uh, stuff. All sorts of highly polished. Uh, there were things that look like high, highly polished silver armor. Yep. That are actually browns and blues. Wow. Not a not a drop of metallic paints anywhere near them. So definitely. Uh, I'm starting, obviously, I've mentioned it a few times in the show. I'm starting to get very excited for the, for the show, for Adepticon. Oh, yeah. Um, and we mentioned, uh, so if you're at Adepticon and not doing anything on the Thursday or the Friday morning, drop by the, the Star Wars Legion uh, area. I'll be helping out with some of the hobby fun that uh, people will be getting into. So, yeah, just drop by and say hi. Oh, wow. I lost, my, s- I lost my skull. Sorry, I just... Uh, or the, the spot on the helmet. Oh, that one. So, yeah, that, the way you put that in there just makes that helmet just look shiny. 
So well, even though it's, it's, it's as matte as everything else, that's it just the makes trick, the right? Look shiny. So yeah. like when you're painting like shiny armor, like this helmet, like literally you actually don't have to paint much of the helmet. It's the dirty secret. All I did was put like successively smaller dots of my, you know, my highlight colors, yep. and then you know one, and I can even strengthen it a little bit. One little, yep. one little blip of of white, and. Um, you know, it looks like you've got shiny, shiny black armor there, but uh, yep. you, you didn't really do that much to do it. Looks which awesome. Is, which is perfect. Yeah, definitely cool. Nice. Okay, so we've got, uh, we've got about five minutes left. I'm just going to keep painting until you literally pull the brush out of my hand. Okay. Yeah. I have to actually reach over and pull the brush out <laughs> no, of your I'm hand. just kidding. <laughs> That's going to involve an elbow, elbow coming around. <laughs> no, okay. So. That's cool. I'm going to put him on the little rotator thing. Spin it out. I doubt we're gonna get. My, we didn't get to the cloak, but you can hmm. imagine the cloak. You can imagine it. You can imagine the cloak. We set up. We set up the basics there. I'll take it home and butcher it completely. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. I doubt that so very now, much. Once again, now it's on the spinner. Oh, there we go. Oh, and it's on the back part that's it's not painted. Side. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Let's wait till it gets to the front side. Okay. So as you come around there. Oh, how fantastic is that? Awesome. Cool. <laughs> that is your favorite line. It is. Your favorite Vader line. It really is. <laughs> What's your favorite Vader line? I don't know. I, I the, the the anytime he's choking out a, a Grand Moff or a, <laughs> you know or, or like a captain or an admiral or something, I think that's that's pretty good. It's kind of funny. I was thinking about it uh, the other day. Uh, we talked about Kylo Ren and everybody presenting him currently as like the emo Kylo Ren, um, where he, when he gets angry, he cuts things apart with his lightsaber. <laughs> um, if you go back and look at Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader, sort of that sort of progression through there, it's like, yeah, that's. It's, it's a, that's Maybe. about where that would end up. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's genetically, that would be passed on like uh, like that. But I think the number of times that Darth Vader force chokes somebody is more than Kylo's tantrum. Probably. So Probably. Yeah, fits of rage. I know my favorite line. Anyway. No disintegrations. <laughs> no when he's telling Boba Fett to right. go get them and it's right. no disintegrations. <laughs> yeah. That's it, for sure. All this time, you realized when he was saying "as you wish," <laughs> he was actually saying "I love you." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish you hadn't said that. <laughs> oh man! Oh, it's oh. fantastic bringing bringing things together. Ruining the original trilogy, yeah. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> enhancing it with the Princess Bride. Enhance. Enhance. Enhancing. Enhancing. Yeah, it's definitely enhancing. So. Go. I think uh, we're almost at, at time. So hopefully uh, everybody's enjoyed it today. Um, a new guest. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Another um, botched job of a hosting sort of thing done by me. I think it was great. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, very cool. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks uh, for having me. You can check out all of Jeff's stuff or a lot of Jeff's stuff if you go to uh, Rogue Shader. On Facebook? Facebook.com slash Rogue Shader. And uh, what, who are you on Instagram? Rogue, Rogue Shader. Shader. And Twitter. And, uh, yeah, and you have a Patreon. I do. Rogue okay. Shader. It's all Rogue Shader. Patreon.com slash Rogue Shader. Just, uh, just like uh, just Rogue Trader, but Rogue Shader. All right. Nice. A clever play on words. It was. OG nice. play on words. <laughs> nice and funny. Uh, very cool. So uh, what's your local store? What's the um, we actually have one in, uh, there's actually a, um, there's a couple. So we've got Titan right down the street. Yeah. I'm a little bit farther away. There's yeah, a what, GW. What's your local store? My local store is GW. Is, there's a games workshop in Gaithersburg. Gaithersburg, right. And yeah. then I feel like there may be a, another friendly local game store nearby, but I cannot, they're pretty new and I can't remember the name of them. Okay, right, yeah. Um, also, Brainstorm Comics up in Frederick, too. Right. That's one. Well. Excellent. Because one of the things we like to do on the show is uh, remind everybody to head along to their friendly local game store, become part of the community, uh, get involved in the, uh, the hobby side of things there as well. 
uh, do some painting in the store, teach people to paint, yeah. ask questions of people who are painting in the store. Uh, but basically, you go to the store, get involved, um, and help grow the community. So, uh, Johnny's freaking me out by, any, by putting up words, like random words. I can't believe it. It read like, it, I think it was fake book or something like that. <laughs> so, Facebook. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, also, head along uh, to Facebook. You're on Facebook at the moment watching this. Uh, head along to the Painting Happy Little Minis group. Uh, so, it's just Painting Happy Little Minis. Uh, and ask to join the group. Uh, join in the conversations there with all of the fantastic painters that we have. Uh, and Rick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. It's the fact. It's there. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, come, come along, uh, ask to join the group. Uh, myself and Rick will race to uh, admit you. Uh, see who can click first. But, uh, yep, uh, also you can follow, uh, follow us on any of the game, tre game trade media, social. social media sources, so Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, Twitter and there's probably another one, right? I'm sure there is. Twitter. MySpace. Uh, MySpace. Twitch. Oh, Twitch. 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 Twitch as well. Nice. In fact, you guys are on Twitch right now. Oh. As a, in addition to Facebook Live. Wow. That, I'm halfway to becoming a partner. <laughs> Look at that. That's great, right? Awesome. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, very cool. Uh, come, along, come along, join us in all those places. And uh, most importantly, uh, oh, no. no? Yeah, Wait. Real quick, go ahead, finish your, finish your thought. Spin that other camera. Oh, yeah, I, I got one last thing I want to one close last out thing you with. You want to say? You, yeah. You'll close out the show? Yeah. Well, okay, you, you, you know, I was going to say, um, head along to your local game store and, uh, and have fun. All right. So, tomorrow, make sure you guys are on every social media platform that Game Trade Media is associated with Alliance Game Trade, Com Comic Wow, everything, because tomorrow, technically tonight at midnight, we're, having, we're launching a huge Gleam campaign, and I'm going to tell you what it is. You and a friend will get a round trip ticket and hotel at San Diego Comic Con with four day passes this year at San Diego Comic Con. You have a chance to win that prize. Uh, it's a huge deal. It launches at midnight tonight. So make sure you're following all of our social media platforms uh, so that you do not miss the opportunity to enter and potentially win a trip to San Diego Comic Con with hotel and flight, round trip flight. Okay, my That's last question there is am I allowed to enter? <laughs> Sadly, <laughs> Dave, you are not allowed to enter. Son of a... Here's the thing. That's going to be great. That's huge. It's huge. Very exciting. Especially since you can't get tickets now. Yep. And no doubt the hotels are sold out. And... Uh, probably. Yeah. Host hotels are. Host hotels. And this is right next to the... Hotel, it's hotel the... Mageddon hasn't happened yet, though, has it? I don't know. <clears throat> for like for the, San Diego? The lottery, yeah. That, I, don't, I don't know yeah. if, the, if the Hotel Mageddon, as you said, uh, <laughs> has happened. But the fact that it's a host hotel, it's, a, it's yeah, the Manchester Grand Hyatt next to the convention center that's on the waterfront. That's it's amazing. amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's going to be a huge prize, uh, it's, and it's f being put on by Diamond Comic Distributors, who is our parent company. Yep. So um, they, you know, they decided, let's give it a shot. Let's build this as a way to increase our footprint in social media. And... We'll make, it's going to be very yeah, exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun, so stay tuned for that. So there's two competitions running then. There is. Keep an eye out for it tomorrow for the Gleam for the San Diego uh, Comic Con competition and also for your chance to win all of the wonderful Wave 1 product from Star Wars Legion and Fantasy Flight, which uh, drops in four weeks' time. How about that? March 22nd. Very exciting. Totally getting that. So, very cool. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, I've been Dave. I've been Jeff. We'll see you at the gaming store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.